Hello and welcome to the 7 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Shadi Aqib. In response to the invitation of Rafar Views International School, the representative of His Majesty the King for Charity Work and Youth Affairs, the chairman of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, and president of the Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa expressed keenness to review the Rivia project for restoring old houses, which is the Rafar View School's voluntary charitable project. And is considered one of the pioneering projects linking education and charity and humanitarian work. During the visit, His Highness Sheikh Nasser met with the students that contributed in restoring old houses and discussed with them the Rivia project and its conception, charity mechanisms, and the selection of houses to be restored. His Highness affirmed the close link between education and charity work for devising ideas that strengthen social cohesion and make students the basis for humanitarian work. He noted the role of students in supporting charity. His Highness Sheikh Nasser affirmed that volunteer work is one of the most important areas in which students can develop themselves and their communities that contribute to building a strong society based on compassion and cohesion among all its groups. His Highness noted that the project went out of the traditional scope of charity work through the involvement of students in visiting houses and identifying with the residents and their social and economic situation. His Highness expressed pride in the efforts of the students in promoting voluntary and charitable work, stressing the importance of continuing this pioneering project. The Royal Guard Special Force Commander, His Highness Major Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, received at his office in the Royal Guard the Military Mechanism Update Work Team, consisting of senior officers, row officers, and individuals from the Bahrain Defense Force CBDF Technical Support Unit. His, high, rather His Highness Major Sheikh Khalid hailed the efforts of the team members in re updating the military mechanisms and reorganizing them to maintain the historical period that witnessed their participation as military mechanisms employed in the operations the BDF unit carried out. He wished the team success in performing its duties optimally to achieve the development at Bahraini military level. The Representatives Council held its 24th regular session at its fourth meeting, chaired by Council Speaker Ahmed Al Mullah. The Council approved the request for the abolition of Parliamentary Inquiry Committee on the seizure of land in eastern Rafah that was intended to build a school on it and converted it into a private commercial complex. The Council decided to approve the draft law of civil and commercial pleadings promulgated by Legislative Decree Number 12 of 1971 up to approve the amendments made to it defend that rather definitely as a matter of urgency and to refer it to the Shura Council. In regards to law number 11 of 1975 concerning passports, the Council approved adding a new article as well as approving its final amendment and its referral to the Shura Council. The Council also approved the law concerning organization of pension and retirement benefits for government employees amending certain provisions of law number 13 of 1975. The Council discussed the Finance and Economic Affairs Committee report in regards to a draft law concerning the amendment of Article 32 of Decree Law No. 39 for the year 2002 related to the general budget. The Council decided to approve the draft law and the amendments and to refer it to the Shura Council. The Council approved the issuance of a statement on the success of the Bahrain Chamber of Commerce and Industry elections. 
The Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, inaugurated the activities of the Regional Forum on Natural Gas Pipeline Networks today. More in this report with Sheikh Mohammed. The Regional Forum on Natural Gas Pipeline Networks was held in the Kingdom of Bahrain for the first time today under the patronage of the Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa. The event was organized by the National Oil and Gas Authority in cooperation with the International Gas Union and attended by a large number of regional and international participants. Uh, the importance of gas is growing. It is uh, the primary source of electricity and, and water desalination. Uh, and all over the GCC, uh, the growth, projected growth in gas consumption uh, is, uh, is growing. Uh, there has been, been talks about the GCC gas grid. Uh, we, we have been successful in an electricity grid. Uh, the next initiative could be uh, a GCC gas grid. In Bahrain, uh, we have been working on diversifying our gas sources. We produce gas from the Bahrain field. We have a, a pre khuf or a deep gas discovery, which we are going to work on this year to develop. So that brings the second source of gas. And the third would be an LNG terminal that is under construction today. will be ready by the end of this year, uh, operating by next year. The participants included senior officials, experts in the industry, representatives of international organizations, governmental institutions, and oil firms operating in the region under the umbrella of the IGU. This is a very important event where all GCC uh, countries attend and exchange information and insight uh, and insights on the uh, gas developments in the region. IGC is a non-profit organization that aims for uh, developing the natural gas around the world. We have uh, uh, 85 uh, years of, uh, of uh, life and for us it's very important to gather uh, people from uh, different uh, regions to have uh, different views and exchange and discuss about uh, uh, what are the benefits and um, the most challenging items for the for natural gas. Each country currently we they have their own network and they're managing it exten extensively and the whole idea of this event is to look at future maybe requirement of interlinkage uh, of the GCC countries similar to the, uh, uh, the electricity uh, sector. Uh, Oman is already uh, somehow linked already to some uh, Gulf countries like uh, the UAE through the Dolphin uh, uh, project and uh, there is a, uh, I, th I guess this, com uh, this event is uh, to look at uh, similar uh, uh, collaboration amongst the rest of the Gulf countries. We are very, very pleased that this event is hosting a number of experts and uh, officials from various countries in the world. We have uh, experts from the USA, uh, from Europe, uh, from Asia and from the Gulf as well. We have participation from the GCC countries, very high presentation, and we are very pleased to hold this event in Bahrain. The development of the oil industry in the region is witnessing continuous strides, and Bahrain is keeping up with the latest technological developments and applications to ensure its progress and attain the best results. Through these measures and more, the NOGO works to support Bahrain's national sustainable development goals led by His Majesty the King and aids in the progress and advancement of the country. The regional meeting on cross-border gas grids connects important players in the oil and gas sector in the Gulf with international experts and provides a platform for the exchange of information. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shoukh Mohammed. The Minister of Labor and Social Development and Chairman of the Labor Market Regulatory Authority, Jamil bin Mohammed Ali Hamedan, headed Bahrain's delegation, participating in the meetings of the 332nd session of the International Labor Organization Board of Directors, held in Geneva, Switzerland. The Kingdom participates in the international meeting as a member of the organization's Board of Directors. The meeting reviews a number of reports submitted by the organization's committees. Hamedan affirmed the Kingdom's keenness on benefiting from its membership in the organization to support its goals and the causes of Arab and Asian member states. The Minister of Transportation and Telecommunications Engineer Kamal bin Ahmed Mohammed met with the affiliates of the first Deputy Prime Minister's Fellowship Program for the development of national caters. The Minister noted that the Fellowship's Program comes in line with Bahrain's 2030 economic vision and contributes in qualifying a generation capable of development and innovation which affirms Bahrain's keenness to invest in the, its human resources. 
He also expressed confidence in the success of the program in developing Bahraini competencies. He held the goals of the program, which are based on the assignment of young Bahraini competencies from government authorities, which reflect the vision of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander and First Deputy Premier, to create national caters capable of participating in the development of the kingdom. The minister delivered a presentation on the work of the ministry and the role and duties of its sectors, as well as the most important projects of the ministry under implementation and future projects that will contribute to the development of Bahrain in the field of transport and rather communications and infrastructure development, in line with the aspirations of the Economic Vision 2030. The minister also discussed the ministry's development projects and initiatives and investing in human resources through funded programs implemented by Bahrain Airport Company in cooperation with Tempkeen. He called on the affiliates to benefit from the opportunities provided by the program and wish them success in their careers. On the sidelines of the 62nd session of the Commission on the Status of Women, the CSW at the United Nations, the official registration for the Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalif International Women's Empowerment Award was announced. This was in the presence of the SCW Secretary General Halil Ansari and the Executive Director of UN Women, Famzil Blamboko Nguka, along with high level representatives of states of the world and international institutions and organizations related to women. Speaking at a special event held on this occasion, Al Ansari noted the partnership with UN Women to adopt and launch a Global Women's Empowerment Award, bearing the name of Her Royal Highness, the wife of His Majesty the King and President of the Supreme Council for Women, the SCW, Princess Sabika bint Ibrahim Al Khalifa, to contribute to highlighting the importance of the commitment of states, bodies and organizations through their legislative, executive, public and private agencies and civil society to the policy of non-discrimination against women. The award also aims to the establishment of opportunity equality between the two genders at all levels, as well as appreciating the efforts of initiatives aimed at integrating the needs of women, thus contributing to positive change in their reality towards a more stable and productive life. El Ansari pointed out that a number of general criteria have been developed to qualify for the award, most notably the creation of scientific, rather scientific methodologies and policies to bridge gaps in favor of women in various sectors and to sustain their application and to contribute to the provision of specific services for different age groups of women. The Executive Director of UN Women Chairperson of the Award Committee called on public and private sector institutions civil society and individual initiatives to apply for this award, which has a total prize of 400,000 US dollars and a show of appreciation to efforts aimed at activating women's advancement policies that enhance their participation in sustainable developments. Ms. Malambo Nguka hailed the efforts made by the Kingdom of Bahrain in the field of supporting women's advancement for many years. Today, uh, we really are thankful to the Kingdom of Bahrain for having come up with uh, an award that recognizes global champions uh, on gender equality. But the nice thing is that uh, young people can apply, institutions can apply, civil society, governments, and, 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 and women uh, leaders. Mm -hmm. What uh, we are looking for here, it's people who are doing uh, initiatives that will make a difference, that other people can learn from, that can become role models. The Royal Highness has been working on it uh, for a long time, but uh, in the last two years we started discussing in earnest uh, with UN Women, and now we are launching, people must, be, must start applying now because it's open for application, because next year, this time, we will have winners. A very good evening. You're watching the business news on Bahrain International with me, Mohammed Youssef. Bahrain All Share Index closed at 1,361.10 points, marking an increase of 7.82 points above last closing. The increase was in the commercial bank sector and investors traded mainly in the same sector with 62% of total shares. 53 transactions included 1,375,460 shares worth 300,197 Bahraini dinars. 
the largest pop culture festival in the world, is coming to Bahrain for the first time. Bahrain Comic Con 2018 will take place over 16th and 17th of this month at the Bahrain International Circuit. Bahrain Comic Con 2018 is a multi-genre entertainment and comic convention which brings together some of the most exciting regional and international names in popular culture and gaming, the world's biggest studios and a host of international celebrities.